From now on, the definition of conversions in Google Analytics 4 will change. In this video, I will explain what all of this means, what to do about it, and at the end of this video, I will answer the most common questions you might have. In the past, if you wanted to measure a particular event, which is important to your business, for example, a form submission or a purchase, you had to mark such events as conversions. From now on, such conversions will be called key events. The flow will remain pretty much the same. You send an event to Google Analytics 4, then you go to the admin section, events, and then mark some events as key events. Basically, the name conversion is changed to key event. This means that metric names also change. For example, instead of session conversion rate, you will have session key event rate, which I have to admit does not sound very user friendly. So why is Google doing this? Well, the main reason is the mismatch between conversion numbers in Google Ads and Google Analytics. Things such as lookback window settings, counting method, attribution models, all of them affect the metrics and some users get confused. They keep asking why the conversion numbers between both platforms are different. To address this issue, Google decided to do several things. The first one is to rename Google Analytics conversions to key events. I already told you about that. The second change is that conversions as a concept still remains in Google Analytics, but it will apply only to those conversions that are also conversions in Google Ads. So if you have a key event in Google Analytics 4, and that key event is also imported as a conversion in Google Ads, then it will be also displayed as a conversion in Google Analytics. So here I am, for example, in the traffic acquisition report. Here we see various traffic sources. And then previously, we had a column called conversions. Now it is called key events. This column displays those events that are marked as key events in the admin panel of your GA4. But if, for example, you go to the advertising section, here you will see the conversion performance section. I don't know if you will see that now, but if not, then you should see that soon. Then here, this report focuses only on Google Ads conversions, or in other words, events that are imported as conversions to Google Ads. This is my demo property, so I don't have any conversion data from Google Ads, but here you would see the name of the conversion and then how many Google Ads conversions did you get? So the numbers in this report should match the numbers in your Google Ads accounts. But if the report or some metric mentions key events, then you're not dealing with conversions from Google Ads. You're dealing with any event that is marked as a key event in your property. For example, in the attribution section, you have key event paths. Previously, this report was called conversion paths, but since right now the name conversion is reserved just for Google Ads, we have to work with key events. So if I click here, then I can select which key events do I want to include in this particular analysis. As a result, the process of creating conversions will be simpler. At some point, you will be able to create Google Ads conversions directly from the interface of GA4. Such conversions will share the same settings. So what's next? How are we going to work from now on? Well, it depends on the use case. If you want to quickly check the number of Google Ads conversions, and in this case, I mean events that are imported as conversions to Google Ads, then you go to the advertising workspace and check the conversion performance report. If you want to check the performance of important events regardless of whether they came from Google Ads or another channel, then you look at key events and use reports such as explorations or standard reports or other reports that mention key events. For example, key event paths. What do I think about all of this? Well, I'm not a fan. I understand the problem. I understand the reasoning behind this, but it does not look like this change will solve the problem completely. Sure, Google Ads reports should match the conversion performance report in GA4. But if my client looks at key events in other reports, they will probably still have the questions why key events coming from paid ads do not match the numbers of conversions. So the problem still remains to some extent. It is just moved from one place to another. Also, we will have to work more on education. First of all, educate ourselves about this change and then educate our coworkers, clients, stakeholders about what the hell this key event is and how is it different from conversions, especially if the company is using several analytics tools. So I have mixed feelings about this. And for the end of this video, here are several common questions that I wanted to address. What actions do you need to take in this case? No action is required, except that you will need to inform others about the name change. Google is now rolling out this change and eventually conversions will be renamed to key events. Do you need to update your Google Analytics tracking code or Google Tag Manager? The answer is no. 
I cannot see this change in my account. Why? It's a gradual rollout and it might take about a week or so. You will have to be patient. Will key events be calculated differently than the legacy conversions? No. The functionality of key events remains the same as the legacy conversions. Basically, Google just changed the name here. Can an event be marked as a key event and as a conversion at the same time? Yes. A form submission, for example, can be marked as a key event and it will be used in all reports where key events are mentioned and at the same time it can also be imported to Google Ads. Then that event will be a conversion and it will be displayed in reports such as conversion performance. The fact that event is a conversion in Google Ads does not affect how it is calculated as a key event. So yeah, that's it for this video. This is still a developing situation and we might learn more details in the future. If you want to stay up to date with this change, then subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, if you found this video useful, hit the like button below this video. This will tell the YouTube algorithm gods that this video is good enough to recommend. Thanks for watching. My name is Julius. This is Analytics Mania and I'll see you in the next video.